Hello, friends of Trinity. God's peace be with you today as we tune in for another devotion. (laughs) What a different scene Billings looks like this week, isn't it? (laughs) Last week, we were enjoying temperatures in the 60s, and we were commenting, more than one person commented to me of how nice the weather was. We were enjoying being outside, doing different things in February (laughs) that you don't normally do, and here we are a week later. The temperatures are not in the 60s today, are they? (laughs) This week, I think we're going to be below zero for our highs every day of the week. And we got a nice blanket of snow that has transformed everything. And it looks so different this week than just a week ago. And yet, as we see creation, we see the season of winter changing the landscape and how we see things in life. It can also point us to the changes we see in Jesus. Here we are, the last week of Epiphany. On Sunday, we will be celebrating the transfiguration of Jesus. Literally, uh, the dictionary definition of transfigure means to change in appearance or form, a transformation. We've certainly seen a transformation outside with the weather. And at the transfiguration of Jesus, there is a transformation. You remember the account. Uh, This year, we'll be reading the account of Jesus' transfiguration from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9. It's also recorded in Matthew, chapter 17, and Luke, chapter 9. And it's the account of Jesus going up on the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. And there, Jesus is on the mountain, and Moses and Elijah appear with him. And that voice from heaven declares, This is my son, In him I am well pleased. And Peter has those famous words, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Let's build a shelter, three of them in fact, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For a moment, on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus as a man is standing there with Moses and Elijah and his clothes become whiter than, as we hear in Mark's gospel, than anyone can bleach them. And he is transfigured, which means the power and glory of God was shining through him. And for a moment, we get to see a glimpse of that, of Jesus' power and glory, the power and glory he left in the kingdom of heaven when he became a man to walk on this earth. Oh, as a person, as a man, We see glimpses of Jesus' power and we see glimpses of his authority and and even of his glory. There on the Mount of Transfiguration, we see his glory, but we also see his authority and power with the miracles he performed. Casting out demons, giving sight to the blind, healing those who are sick, and everyone who has illnesses and diseases, having the lame walk, glimpses of Jesus' power. And yet at the transfiguration, all of his glory and power are revealed for a moment. Otherwise, they're hidden in the form he has taken as a man to be our Savior. We see other glimpses of his glory. Like on the third day after he died, he rose victorious in resurrection victory, and he ascended into heaven. And when he returns, we will see him again in his full glory and power and splendor. And when he returns, we're going to be transformed. We're going to be transfigured, if you will. Just as Jesus was transfigured there on the Mount of Transfiguration, so also we too, will be changed. Scripture speaks about that. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'll begin at verse 50. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, 
For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, O death, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We often hear these words of scripture read at the committal service for someone who has died in the faith, there at the cemetery, these words are read to remind the family and those gathered of the hope we have in Jesus. And those words remind us of the hope we have in Jesus, not only in death, but also today. In the face of all the struggles and challenges and things we see going on in this world and in your life, we have the hope of Jesus coming and changing us. In fact, he has. In the waters of holy baptism, he has changed us. He has transformed us to be his own children, claimed by him, redeemed by his death and resurrection, named by our God and brought into his family. Oh yes, these words from 1 Corinthians, they remind us that we will be changed on the last day. Indeed, we will be. But those words don't just talk about the last day. No, this hope changes how we live today. As we hear in the very next verse, verse 58, therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord, your labor is not in vain. Friends in Christ, this hope of Jesus, that we see his power and glory on the Mount of Transfiguration is a hope that we have to know that we will be transformed for eternity when Jesus comes on that last day. But we also know that Jesus has transformed us from death to life, from being people of this world to being people of his kingdom, where we live in this world to share the good news of Jesus who comes to transform lives and bring his glory, his power, his life to this world. May that promise be yours today. May that promise of Jesus' transfiguration and his life and power be yours to carry into this world. As you share the hope of Jesus that you have with people in your lives that they too may know the power of Jesus and the transformation that he has for your life and a promise for everyone. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we look to the transfiguration of Jesus, we see his power and his glory for just a moment, and yet it is hidden in him being a man who came to be our savior, hidden when he suffered and died on the cross, and it looked like the sin and powers of this world, death itself had won, and yet three days later, he rose victorious over all of the enemies of Satan, of our enemies of sin and death itself, that we may have the promise of life in his name, and your word teaches us that he will return and bring us into your kingdom for eternity, where we will all be transformed into eternal glory. Lord, we look forward to that day. And we ask that you'd send your Holy Spirit upon us, and that the promise of that life in your kingdom, the hope of living in your presence for eternity would strengthen us today as we live in a fallen world with hurts and struggles and sin and suffering. May it be the hope and life of your son, Jesus, that strengthens us as your children. May it be the hope and life of your son, Jesus, that we carry to people in our lives in this world, that they too may look to Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. I mentioned that we'll be celebrating Transfiguration uh, Sunday here, this coming Sunday, which means we move from the season of Epiphany into the season of Lent. And that begins next week on Wednesday, 
the 17th of February, which is Ash Wednesday. And so this will be the last recording that we have for these candlelight conversations for the next uh, six weeks until after Easter, the first Sunday of April. However, we will be recording the Wednesday Lenten services. We won't be having any meals. We can't gather like that safely and distance and things like that to follow guidelines. But we will be gathering as God's children in worship. Those services will also be live streamed. So you won't be able to have the candlelight conversations recorded and available earlier in the day, but you can tune in at 6.30 on Wednesday evenings and you'll be able to watch the service live um, as it's recorded and, and, and live streamed through people or through uh, the technology we have. It also, after the service, that link will be available to watch a recorded service. If you're not able to tune in right at 6.30, it should be available after that service has concluded. So look forward to those services as we focus in the Lenten season on our Lord and Savior Jesus who suffered and died to bring us forgiveness and life for eternity. So go in the peace of Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>